I have personally come to the conclusion that it is impossible to both accept our current scientific understanding of the universe while also holding a belief in Abrahamic theology without espousing a high level of cognitive dissonance. For those of you unfamiliar with this term, cognitive dissonance is the psychological conflict resulting from incongruous beliefs and attitudes held simultaneously. That is, the discomfort one experiences when they realize that they believe in contradicting ideas. When I was a Christian, I always accepted scientific explanations for the existence of our universe, the origin of life and evolution via natural selection. I was never a fundamentalist or a creationist. I tended to put my own spin on things, rationalizing that God simply set the Big Bang in motion as a means to an end, and that humans arose via evolution as God had intended. However, I never really stopped to critically consider the conflicts between the empirical evidence and the claims made in the Bible. I was content to simply let all of this information reside simultaneously in my mind. I convinced myself that Stephen Jay Gould was right when he declared that evolution and theism were non-overlapping magisteria. I often recognize theists today who do the same mental gymnastics that I once did, trying to justify their belief in Iron Age mythology without wanting to seem like a crazy fundamentalist. However, in a way, these religious moderates who readily embrace scientific evidence are even worse than biblical literalists, and here's why. Biblical literalists and creationists understand all too well the implications of accepting scientific explanations as it relates to their religious beliefs. They understand that if there were never two first humans who we can trace our lineage back to, then Adam and Eve didn't exist, and the fall of man is just a fable, and the entire reason for their religion, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, becomes wholly unnecessary. They realize that if the flood story is a myth, then there is no reliable way of determining which portions of the Bible are accurate depictions of historical events and which portions are invented. They then try to make geological evidence fit the mold of their narrative, and poorly might I add. They realize that if the earth is very old, then a plethora of life, such as dinosaurs, preceded humans, and thus all life was not created at the same time, and the creation story in Genesis is, is inaccurate. Now, these literalists at least have the ability to completely own their beliefs. They fully understand that science and biblical accounts of history conflict, but choose to accept the Bible on blind faith rather than science supported by empirical evidence. I'm not saying they are being intellectually honest or wise about this decision, but at least they show an ability to recognize conflict. Religious moderates who accept science, on the other hand, either lack this ability to recognize conflict, haven't thought critically about the ramifications, or understand there is a conflict and simply carry on in their cognitive dissonance. While it is easy to have a basic grasp of the concepts of things like the Big Bang Theory, abiogenesis, and Darwinian evolution, to fully understand and appreciate them requires further consideration. I feel that it would be rather easy for people to have a basic grasp of these concepts and still be religious without recognizing any conflict. The solution to this is to educate such people on the finer details and evidence for these theories so that the conflicts become apparent. It is also easy for someone to simply go about their life without bothering to thoughtfully consider about how their various beliefs amalgamate into their worldview. You know the tenets of your religion and agree with them and accept them, and you know the theory behind and evidence supporting scientific explanations and accept them, but simply fail to consider the fact that these may be incongruous. Many people simply want to just live their life without bothering with such intellectual pursuits. Again, the solution to this is to point out the problems associated with such a worldview. This brings us to the third possibility, which is cognitive dissonance. This should be the easiest condition to address, since the individual already has a level of discomfort over their conflicting beliefs. This is probably the death throes of theism before becoming an atheist. I know it was for me. Trust me, I certainly prefer, prefer theists who accept scientific facts over those who cling to scripture regardless of the evidence presented. It is completely absurd and irrational to believe that the overwhelming majority of the scientific community is collaborating on a grand conspiracy to promote hoaxes that discredit religious claims and has been doing so for several centuries. Fundamentalists treat scientists like they are trying to fulfill an agenda or extinguishing religion and will invent any, any narrative necessary in order to achieve their goal. The most ironic part of such, such accusations of course, is that this is exactly what religion and the church has done throughout history. They have silenced non-believers and dissenters and threatened those who presented evidence that conflicted with religious dogma. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson stated it well when he said, Every great scientific truth goes through three phases. First, people deny it. Second, they say it conflicts with the Bible. Third, they say they knew it all along. The beauty of science is that it is receptive to change. It is always willing to consider new evidence which may cause our current theories to be tweaked or supplanted. Scientists don't have an agenda other than making predictions and conclusions based upon observation. If evolution via natural selection were to be challenged by some new model based upon observed scientific evidence, there'd be no reason to resist that if one is being intellectually honest. The problem with intelligent design is that it isn't science. The Dover case proved that it was nothing more than repackaged biblical creationism. I'll save this topic for a more in-depth discussion in a later video. When creationists project their need to believe in things without seeing them onto us by claiming that it takes just as much faith to believe in science, they are simply wrong. Science deals with the observable universe. Just as a crime scene detective didn't need to be present during a murder to piece together the events, scientists can use the evidence around us to reconstruct the history of our universe. The simple fact is that evolution is happening and has happened. We know that RNA can form from its component parts and that certain metabolic pathways can occur outside of cells. We know that the universe is expanding and cooling. We know that our understanding of physics breaks down at the earliest moments of the Big Bang and that we don't have a full comprehension of what exactly occurred. But we also know that to claim that everything needs a creator is a logical and an infinite regression, and that to claim that a creator always existed is less parsimonious than the natural theory and also raises the question of what prompted the creator to suddenly create anything after existing literally forever. I wouldn't really expect a creationist to be swayed much by this video, but if you are a scientifically literate theist, I'll hope that you consider what I've said and take a second look at what you believe. You already agree that a literal interpretation of the Bible is absurd. So there's only one way for you to go if you're feeling uncertain, the same way that I went. Finally, if you're already an atheist, just remember that most, most atheists were once religious and keep that in mind when discussing these ideas. Rather than thinking of theists as opponents, think of them as future allies if you play your cards right. I am Prototype Atheist. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with anyone else you think would be interested, and subscribe to my channel for future updates. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash prototypeatheist and on Twitter at protoatheist.